the first part will show is how it is put in here. The seat belt out of my way. And if you've never taken one of these apart, getting this uh, piece of plastic off is really easy. You've got a couple of bolts up, a couple of Phillips screws up top, and uh, just two Phillips screws down below. Hold on, tilt down. I love the old first gen Saginaw steering columns. But there we go. From the outside, it even still looks relatively normal. But uh, as you'll see when I get this pulled out, I had to do a lot of cutting of the plastic. And uh, this part right down below here is part of the uh, this plastic piece on the outside that was used where they had, uh, like you can see this one says brake, and there's the oil pressure one. And uh, I believe, the sim no, the signals were up actually on here, but I believe the two inner ones here weren't used. So what I did is I drilled holes in them, and I put um, red bulbs behind it. So that way that became my signal light, because on the Digi itself, there's no actual signal indicator. On the original for this vehicle, for the 86 LeBaron, uh, it was built into the bottom as well, but I had removed it. So I basically just wired in some bulbs myself, which I'll show you when I get it pulled apart. Uh, something like this. You can see I had to cut away a lot of the plastic of the original um, Shadow Sundance cluster because this digital dash, the circuit board is so long, the circuit board literally has to be um, outside on both halves to fit in here. I didn't have to trim the circuit board at all. So you can see I kind of did a hasty job with this, but there's one of my red signal bulbs. And so what we got back here, not beautiful, but functional. The original wiring connectors are still there, and I've just tapped in. So I never actually had to cut factory wires to begin with. First generation shadows up to uh, 1990 had a cable driven speedometer. And then there's the other harness, all tapped in. The only the only wires you have to run that aren't available up here are um, you need a you need a constant power wire to keep the dash's memory base. This uh, little yellow line here. I ran goes to a switch that I installed for a digital dimming thing, which uh, which we should cover in a later topic. Um, the what, the best thing to do would be to go to like yard and get out of like a Dodge Daytona or a LeBaron or something. The light switch that uh, has two clicks. This only has the one click for the dome light. Uh, any vehicle that ever came with a digital dash had two clicks: one for the digital brightness and one for the dome light. Uh, you can actually see this on any modern day Dodge. Uh, you know, Intrepid's, newer minivans, whatnot, they will have that two-click. And to, to know how it works, um, just take a look at the radio, or if you have the, you know, um, compass, you know, temperature deal, um, that first click will change just the brightness of the liquid crystal display. The same thing for this, but obviously this car didn't have one, they didn't really feel it necessary. Alright, so, <laughs> I've removed the wiring that I did and uh, taped these up. Um, almost all the wires were never actually cut to begin with. I just removed some plastic. Sometimes when you do that you will break the wire. Not a big deal. You strip it, tie it back together. So I've just cleaned it all up. The thing that I'll do before I put the dash back in is I'll just put some more tape around to bundle it all together and try to keep it as neat and clean as possible. Forgot to mention as far as wires that you have to run. Um, on Dodge Shadows they don't have an oil pressure sender. So you have to run a wire for that. Um, so I went ahead and yanked that. He's got it over there. I'll show that. I also, uh, this shadow is at 89, so like I showed, it had a cable-driven speedometer. And it has a speed sensor in the transmission for the uh, cruise control. Uh, not all the vehicles have an electric speed sensor. Some have a speed sensor, but it's not plugged into anything. If, if you have a cable-driven speedometer vehicle, just look down here at the transmission where the... Uh, the speedo cable goes and there should be an electric connector right next to it. Uh, vehicles that don't have a cable speedometer, the speed sensor is in the same place, it just doesn't have a cable, it just has the wire. And that connector has two to three wires. And uh, it's pretty much the same on all the Dodge vehicles, it's a white with orange stripe. Um, so I just tapped it in there and ran it instead of trying to hunt it down on the inside to do as good a job as I could. The other wire was the oil pressure sender, <coughs> which he has begun to feed, I believe. Yep, okay. 
because what I did is I grabbed the oil pressure sender out of the junkyard, out of any other Dodge, older Dodge that has um, an oil pressure gauge. So basically anything, uh, I want to say early 80s up to maybe 95. I mean, uh, this one I think I might have pulled out of a Dodge Dynasty if I remember correctly. They're all pretty much the same because the stock for shadows is just one of these, which is just an oil pressure switch for the light. Uh, some of them have a sender built in. Uh, can't say I've ever messed with it to see how well it works. I've always just been using the old style and it worked good for me. So you have to pipe those two wires through. Over here, um, gauge clusters. Um, this is the first gen shadow one, like I showed, as compared to the second gen. <coughs> so the wire on them is the wiring on them is slightly different, and obviously, like I said, this one has a cable speedometer. This one has an electronic control speedometer. So the speedometer has its own little circuit board underneath in here to control the speedometer. And both of these, like most gauges, uh, have a little circuit board up top. That's the tachometer module. If you have a tachometer that's not working well, generally the simplest fix in the world is just re-soldering all the different pins. There's not a ton of them. And uh, it makes a world of difference because over time they just don't work as good. But as you can see on there, for the signals and things, everything is attached via these ribbon cables. Now on mine, obviously, I don't have those anymore. So I just ran wires and fit basic more junkyard parts. Um, little PC PC light sockets in there and uh, as you can see I have cut a lot of plastic away obviously the circuit board is not on here anymore for the old cluster and <clears throat> to carve away enough space to get the connectors in like I said this thing is a tight fit I mean it's exposed on both sides but it does fit the other thing do a little bit of a hurt <coughs> you definitely need the tinting um, my experience, it was best to tint both sides. Uh, it made it a bit darker, was a bit nicer, otherwise it was still pretty bright. Because these are made to have a layer or two of tinting over them. Without it, it's really bright at night. Really bright. So we'll just go ahead and show. As I've reiterated before, this car has been through a lot. It was a restarted its life as 2.5 TBI with an automatic failmatic transmission. Oh, these days... Uh, it is a get reg 5 speed from an 87 LeBaron turbo convertible and a, uh, the engine is currently out of my wife's old 87 that you've seen videos on my channel of probably of me parting it out. So I pulled his dash out just the same so I'm going to go ahead and tap into these wires. I've pulled back the uh, squishy stuff here and um, started by doing a few wires and show out a few things. Um, with digital dashes and with a lot of aftermarket things you might do, like say you want to put in little gauge, gauge pods that uh, you can change the color in the LED, they require a constant feed wire. That means a wire coming from the battery that's always on regardless of the switch. Um, a really good place, actually, when you're working on a lot of the cars, especially the shadows, is the connector for the rear defrost. Um, it's got a nice, thick, heavy powered constant wire that the light amount of power you'll be getting from it isn't going to harm the rear defrost. If you want to do this job really nice and really correct, the best thing to do is to run a constant wire from the battery into a separate fuse panel and do it all nice and proper. So I just took a piece of wire and ran it through. I haven't taped it off yet. Um, the other things that we're going to do here is uh, I'm actually uh, looking towards the future. Is He wants to get uh, an aftermarket tachometer um, that we can mount on the dash. He doesn't like the digital tach as much. So I'm actually running these wires that are going to be for the tack later on. This little ribbon of four wires I actually saved out of the boneyard from a, a broken uh, turn switch, turn signal switch assembly because it's a big solid ribbon of wires like this. So it's really useful. So because I already tapped it into the tack wire, which he had ran a different wire in the past for an issue, and then I'm going to hook those ones up as well. Um, you can find a wiring diagram for your car. That's the easiest way. Otherwise, you do a lot of hunting and pecking, and uh, a lot of Dodges from different ages are going to use the same colors of wires. I'll touch base on this at the last part of the video. Um, I had actually done this, typed this up myself a while back when I put one of these same digital dashes in a Plymouth Neon. Um, I had basically marked down in the middle what it was and on the right the different colors. Like for this digital dash it gives me the colors. 
gray with yellow for oil, etc., etc. So right now I was going to hook up the solid power wire and show you how I strip and tie those in on Dodges. It's pretty simple. The, uh, the solid power wire, let's see, is usually a dark blue. The thing that can be confusing is sometimes uh, the fuel wire will be a blue or like a blue with orange. So that can be a little goofy.